Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at setting up an enhanced throttle hold feature on the Powerbox radios. So, as you're probably aware, most radios on the market have some form of throttle hold facility where users can lock their throttle. So, in for instance, for electric models, uh, it becomes a safety feature where you can flick a switch and the motor is disabled and theoretically safe from firing up. Now this video is going to cover off electric models at, uh, only. I'll do a later video for internal combustion engines because the, the programming is slightly more complex um, insofar as we need a working throttle trim that's not affected or not impacted by the actual throttle hold facility. Um, so I'll do another video at some later stage, but that video will run a lot longer because it's uh, the more complicated programming. However, for an electric model, uh, this is quite easy to do and it'll be a reasonably short video. Okay, at the moment, I've got a standard servo hooked up to my throttle channel and my throttle sticks on the left here. So I've got low throttle or you can imagine for an electric model that would be say motor off. Um, and that's motor full, and then we've got halfway, uh, roughly about there. So again, that's motor off, motor full. We'll just leave it on motor off for now. Let's set up a basic throttle hold as most of us are familiar with on most radios. So on the core and atom, we have a feature called servo cutoff. We'll go into there. Let's add the throttle channel to this particular feature. Click on OK. Now, we need a control. Let's use this switch, only because it's easy to access. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave it at the default setting. So basically, the throttle hold will be activated when the switch is pushed fully forwards toward, towards the back of the radio, etc, etc. So we're happy with that. You'll notice off, on, fairly simple. And let's tell it where we want the servo or the ESC to be set to when the switch is activated. And we'll make that at negative 100%. Fairly standard setup here. So you can imagine with the switch off or the throttle hold off, we have normal th servo operation. If I throw the switch, enable the throttle hold, the servo now goes to negative 100%, which would be, you know, typically for electric model, that's a motor off position. Very easy, very simple. So, say, so, okay, what's the disadvantage here? Well, there's one disadvantage insofar as, you know, people have a habit of bumping the throttle stick. And, you know, if you're not um, careful, you can have the throttle stick above idle or engine off. So it could be bumped up to half or even worst case scenario, full throttle. And then you, deact you go along and deactivate your um, throttle hold switch. And all of a sudden the motor will spring to life. And, you know, if in a precarious position with the model on your bench at home or in the pits or whatever, you can have an out of control model, you panic, you know, can chop a few fingers off. It can be quite dangerous with electric models. So, what's this enhanced throttle hold facility? Well, using virtual switches and a unique logic function within the virtual switch, we can easily set up a, an additional check on the throttle stick. So basically, the throttle will not be enabled if you if you disable the um, throttle hold switch. If you come out of throttle hold and your stick is above engine off position, the motor will still stay dead, and it will not activate until your stick is actually reduced back to the zero position. So how do we do it? Okay, let's remove the switch out of the uh, switching logic here. So I'll keep this active, so the servo cutoff is, it's active but I'm not enabled because there's no switch defined, but we're going to use this um, in a few seconds, because we're going to use a virtual switch to trigger this rather than this switch. So at the moment I've got standard throttle control and the switch does nothing because I've removed it out of the servo cutoff function. Okay, let's have a look at our logic switches, or our virtual switches I should say. I don't have any defined. Let's make one. Let's call this one, I don't know, we'll just call it hold to keep it simple so I don't have to do too much typing. So this is going to be our throttle hold virtual switch. Now, 
We need to compare the physical switch that we're going to use to activate our throttle hold with the throttle stick position. So how do we do that? Well, with this virtual switch, we have two inputs. So one of them, the top one's going to be for our physical switch, which will be this switch here. So let's set this up. And you'll notice this is a three position switch. So what I'm going to do is have throttle hold activated when the switch is in the fully forward position or fully back. Um, and then the other two positions will have the throttle enabled. So all we need to do now is we need to have the red zone on the cursor when the switch is in the throttle hold position. Uh, just bear in mind that my screen might be slightly different to yours because I've actually activated the reverse hardware feature for my switches. Um, so you might find your cursor is over on the left hand side when your switch is fully forward. So just be aware of that. Programming is exactly the same. You just got to move the red uh, section over to the left when you do that, that's all. So you just got to make sure that when your switch is in the uh, throttle hold position, you want it to be red. And the other two positions are going to be green. Simple as that. Fairly easy to program. Now that's the switch done, but we also need to do the, the uh, throttle stick. So let's select the throttle stick as an input. Now, what we're going to do is at, at low stick, so you notice the little cursor there, so at low stick we're going to reduce this value to negative 95%. That's the lowest you can go. And then the green bar, we're going to reduce the hysteresis, the yellow section, to the bare minimum. So you need to keep 1% difference between these two values, otherwise it doesn't work properly. So you have 94 and negative 95%. And you'll notice the white cursor as I move the throttle stick is in the green zone when the throttle is basically activated. Okay. Now, let's select the logic switch. Now you'll notice there's a logic RS. So R and S stand for reset and set. It mimics a flip-flop basically if you're into electronics. And we also have a logic uh, function called lock SR. The only difference is, is the output is reversed between the two. So there might be instances where you might have a function which you want it to be on all the time um, and not easily disabled. So sort of the reverse of a throttle safety switch. So in that case, you'd you use the lock RS option. But in this situation, we want the opposite logic to trigger the, the uh, servo cutoff. So you need to use the lock SR option. Okay, so... I'll come back to this in a second. Let's go back into our servo cutoff. And remember we removed the switch out of here. So let's add the control for it, which is going to be our virtual switch output from the logic switch we just created. Oh, sorry, from the virtual switch, which is called hold. So we'll use that. So basically when that is activated, when the um, virtual switch that's called hold is on, this servo cutoff will be activated. In other words, the servo will be locked to negative 100%. In other words, the motor off position. So let's go back to our uh, virtual switch and have a look at it. So let's say we want to fly. If I just have the normal mode with the motor enabled, I disable the throttle hold and we have normal control of the throttle. That's fairly standard, fairly straightforward. And you notice the output state is off. So whenever this is off, we've got motor control. Now, let's reduce our stick to idle, and I land or whatever, I'm in the pits, so I activate the throttle hold facility so the motor's sort of safe, and you'll notice that's gone to on, so now we have no motor control, the motor is switched off, fairly simple, however you notice as I'm moving the throttle stick, as I come off the, the bottom, you'll notice that switches on, so we'll have a look at that in a second, so Assuming we accidentally bump the throttle stick, and I'll, I'll move it to say half stick, and I now flick the um, motor out of throttle hold to normal run mode, you'll notice that this will stay on. It will not switch off. Let's try it. So you notice this switch is not doing anything now. It's actually locked. This lock SR function has locked the output state to on irrespective of our motor run switch or our throttle hold switch. So this is that safe, extra safety uh, feature I'm telling you about. So even though theoretically now the motor should be 
they'd be disabled, it's not. So I can go to full throttle, I've got nothing. The servo's not moving. However, to enable it, I have to reduce the throttle stick all the way down to low. And now, I've got control again. So this prevents that problem where, you know, you activate your throttle hold and you, like I said, bump the stick or whatever. You know, you might be carrying your model out to the flight line or whatever. You bump the stick and then, you know, you flick the switch. The motor will still stay dead until you reduce your throttle stick all the way back to zero. Cool. It's a very handy safety feature and I recommend everybody set up all of their electric models like this. And like I said, I've got a similar feature uh, for um, internal combustion engines and I'll do a video on that as well. Uh, but like I said, a little bit more comprehensive programming for that. And that'll be a, probably a video that's about twice as long due to the extra programming required. And that's so you can, you know, you can have your throttle trim active even though this safety feature is switched on. You'll still have the ability to start your motor and basically run it at so at an idle setting which is important for an internal combustion motor however what it will do is it will lock your throttle at idle so you can't increase above idle as a matter of fact if you bump the throttle uh, too far like above half stick it'll actually kill your internal combustion engine it'll stop it so yeah like i said an extra safety feature all right i hope you found this video handy and hopefully um this video goes some way in preventing any sort of accidents down in the field or in your shed or your bedroom, wherever you work on your models. Um, hopefully it saves someone's fingers. Thanks for watching.